Hi, I'm John Fakara. Welcome to Fakara Classic. And today we're on the road for a very special visit to the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada. There's an event here tonight called Music in Motion. And it's being put on by Drive Toward a Cure, which is an organization that raises awareness and money for the Parkinson's Foundations. And most people don't know, my mom passed away from Parkinson's a few years ago, and I'm very close to that organization, and I, and I support it as much as I can. So I'm here tonight to support them, and they've been really nice to allow me to get close up to their Halo car, the car that has been brought in special for this event, this 1952 Jaguar XK120C, also known as the C-Type. Now this car is in a private collection down in Arizona. It rarely ever comes out in public. It was brought up here just for this event and I get to play with it for a little while and show you all about this awesome car. So first, XK120C. What does that mean? There was the famous Jaguar XK120 sports car which came out in 1948. And in 1950, they decided to take the car to Le Mans. And they brought three very stock sports cars to Le Mans and ran them, and they did pretty well. The cars finished, didn't win or anything, but that set in motion the desire to go really racing for Jaguar. And in 1950, late in 50, they started building this car, the XK120C. Now the C stands for competition. And that's why there's no A type or B type. They start with the C type, then later the D type and the E type. Most people don't know why there's no A and B. Now you do, some geeky facts already this early in the video. So the XK120C, the C-Type, was built over the next few months and he built three of them for Le Mans in 1951. Now in a shocker, those cars ended up doing incredibly well. The two of them kind of had a little some teething issues, but one of them ended up winning overall Le Mans in 1951. And this is the first British team to bring home a victory at Le Mans since Lagonda in the 30s and before that the famous Bentley boys and Bentleys in the 20s. This was huge and they did it with this kind of car. Now this specific car, this is chassis number seven. This is one of the customer cars they built afterwards. They built about 54 of these cars over 1951, 52, and 53. This particular car is special because it was the first C-type ever brought to the United States. And it ended up winning quite a few races here, driven by the most amazing Phil Hill, one of my favorite drivers. And we'll go into him in a minute because he needs some explanation and some praising. But let's stick to the car real quick. The C-Type essentially was a tricked out version of XK120, but they ditched a whole lot of the 120 car. The box tube kind of frame thing they had for the XK120, gone. This is all tube frame chassis in the middle and then they decided to use the 120 engine, but it's souped up, and I get to open the front. This car's worth millions, by the way, so if any scratch is probably 100 grand, so let's be careful. But under the hood is the XK120 motor. This is a 3.4 liter six cylinder. It's a twin cam engine, and this engine should be familiar to anybody. It was in every Jaguar for almost the next 50 years. It was a brilliant design. It produces a tremendous amount of mid-range torque. It's got a lot of grunt. I've driven quite a few of these cars and I, just one of my favorite engines of, of all time. The early cars had twin carburetors. The later, later ones had three, um, which produced a, a bit more horsepower. Now, when they were built, the horsepower was about 200 horsepower. They could get 210 with higher compression, but at Le Mans, the fuel, the French fuel, awful. So they would lower the compression, run at about 200 horsepower. That gave this car a top speed of about 144 miles an hour. And in racing trim, maybe getting closer to 150. What's an interesting little bit, and there's some geekery here for you. The XK120 was called the XK120 because its top speed when it came out in 48 was 120 miles an hour. So the temptation was, was to call this the XK150 because they estimated the top speed around 150 miles an hour. That didn't stick. But so about 144 miles an hour, 200 horsepower. The car weighs about 2,100 pounds. Up front and in the back, drum brakes. Now these had drum brakes in 51 and 52, and then they brought in in 53, later 52, disc brakes, which back in the 50s was like putting in stuff from NASA in your car. People didn't understand it. Ferrari refused to put disc brakes in his cars for years, but it was a huge advantage 
for Jaguar in 53. Now, 51, they won Le Mans. 52, they took the cars back, but they got nervous because the Mercedes 300 SL, which was coming on strong, they heard was really fast in the straights. So they redesigned the body a bit and came out with this droop nose, hideous looking thing that overheated and they failed completely in 52. In 53, they went back to this design. They bumped up the horsepower. They knocked another carburetor on there. 220 horsepower, top speed, just over 150 miles an hour. And they ended up taking first, second, fourth, and ninth at the 1953 Le Mans. The greatest victory Jaguar has ever known at that race with these cars, the C-types. Now I'm gonna get in because I can. Um, it's got one door, there's no door on the other side. So this is, these were specially made just for racing. There was no expectation you were gonna put a passenger in the car. Here, come over here real quick. And you can see this, there are spark plugs right here, spare spark plugs. In case the spark plugs loaded, they could be replaced on the fly in the car. Drivers were allowed to work on the cars at the track at Le Mans, but you couldn't have outside assistance. That would automatically disqualify you. Now, it's a very simple interior. It's two seats. Reason for two seats, it's a sports car. It has to satisfy sports car rules. You got this big 17 inch steering wheel, which really looks like it belongs in an old plane or boat or something. Another cool thing about the C-types is that they got rid of the steering box and one of the first cars that they had ever put rack and pinion steering in, which made it a lot easier to drive at high speeds at 100 and something miles an hour. And come around the front, you can see how exposed I am as a driver. Now I'm 6'3", Phil Hill was 5'8", so obviously he'd be sitting a little deeper in. But they're not wearing full face helmets back then. They're wearing little squid lids and goggles. You imagine driving this at night in the fog, in the rain, at like two in the morning, you've already been driving for an hour or two. You're trying to maintain some kind of focus. That engine is screaming and the noise of the wind going over you at 140 something miles an hour. In 1953, one of the drivers was out there and his windscreen got hit by a bird. The bird hit the windscreen, cracks it, snaps it off, hits him in the face, almost breaks his nose. He keeps driving, the blood running down his face. These guys were, superhuman. And you hear the drivers now today complaining that the air conditioning broke in my car or the water tube wasn't feeding me water while I was driving. Boo hoo, right? <laughs> you gotta imagine what these guys were like. And they're dressed in like wool shirts. There's no fireproof outfit they're in. There's no seat belts in this car. There are now because the owner put them in. But they're just like, when if I crash, I'll just get thrown out of the car. 2,100 pound car, aluminum skin on it. You're gonna die, anything happens to this. Now, Phil Hill talked about driving these cars and in his driving career, he was terrified of race cars. And it made him one of the greatest race car drivers of all time because of his fear that something would happen. He was insanely precise. And one of the great things he ever did, and this is documented, Le Mans racetrack at that time was over eight miles long. He had documented 12 consecutive laps over an eight mile course, every lap within one tenth of a second of each other. That's insane. Modern drives could do that, you know, with all the technology, Formula One drivers can move that kind of things around. You're talking in something like this, 12 laps within a tenth of a second, the man was super human. He would go on to win three Le Mans, he would end up going and winning three 12 hours of Sebrings. He'd be the first American Formula One slash Grand Prix champion, the only American born one because Mario Andretti was born in Italy. He was the first guy to drive under nine minutes at the Nürburgring. He is one of the greatest drivers of all time and proudly an American and the sweetest, sweetest man. Now, you're wondering why Phil Hill's car is here is because Phil Hill passed away from Parkinson's. And he was very closely, obviously, supported the cause and brought a lot of awareness to Parkinson's disease. Oh, that was really, I was that kind of, you tell, was I excited in the car? I was pretty excited. Um, to be in the same seat as Phil Hill, to be in a car like this that no one ever gets to see, that's extraordinary. On the cap here, they've engraved all the accomplishments of this car and the places that it won. And it's cool because it 
It says here it ran at Bonneville at over 150 miles an hour. This thing is extraordinary. While we're looking at the fuel cap, fuel tank, 48 gallon fuel tank. And you imagine sitting in there, your head right there, and guys filling this thing up with fuel. Must have been absolutely maddened just with all that hot gas coming over you. So that's this exciting car. Let's talk a little bit more about Phil Hill. Phil Hill would go on to, when he retired in 1966. The man, by the way, won the first race he ever was in, and he won the last race he was ever in. First race, I think he was driving an MG as a kid, and the last race, I think he was driving a Chaparral. And he had this incredible career. Drove for Ferrari, Maserati, Cooper, everybody. If you get a chance, look him up. There's some great stuff online about Mr. Phil Hill. He'd also go afterwards, he would start restoring cars, really big, important cars for Pebble Beach. He was a judge at Pebble Beach. In fact, I think he judged more times than any other judge at Pebble Beach for almost 40 years. He was an important man in the community his entire life and supportive of the hobby and of cars and bringing him to life and was always there to tell a story. I wish I had an opportunity to meet him. I was a little young and a little inexperienced. Now, you probably have seen this painting behind me. This painting was painted just for this event. Painted by, and if you've watched the 928 video, my friend Kelly Telfer. Kelly, come here, come here, come here, come here. Kelly donated this painting for this event, and I think it hopefully it raises a lot of money for Parkinson's. Just tell us about it real quick, Kelly. Well, you know, I really consider them. Hold on, I, I, gotta, I, gotta put, I gotta give you my microphone, because that's how, we're real high tech here. I really consider it an honor to be here for Deb Pollock and her drive towards a cure and the Parkinson's of uh, Northern Nevada. Um, I'm donating this painting, the highest bidder tonight is gonna win this. My understanding is it's already placed a winning bid, so we're hoping it goes higher. Um, but I'm really honored to do this and support a great cause. My great friend, John Ficarra, what he brings to the table is incredible. His knowledge of these cars, what he just spewed off the top of his head is incredible. And really, I'm so honored to be part of this event. I'm so honored to be surrounded by this great stuff. Now, as, as John had mentioned, here is a Formula One Ferrari that Phil raced. He's very pensive, sitting in a Formula One Ferrari right before he went out to qualify. You'll notice he always wore a blue and white striped short sleeve shirt. As John was saying, Nomex and fire suits were a thing well into the future. Could you imagine racing a Formula One Ferrari in a short sleeve shirt blowing in the wind? <laughs> and John had mentioned the helmet. So this is the shorty helmet they ran. And then this is a sports car. This one's a Ferrari. And of course, this is the featured uh, Jaguar C-Type. However, what's interesting is the flag man is holding his own hat as he's holding the flag in the other stand. And you know, this just brings us back to an era of racing that's incredible, that's unbelievable. And as John mentioned, real drivers in real cars. And once again, I'm honored to be part of this. I wanna thank everybody involved. I wanna thank John Ficara. I wanna thank Zach for the great video. You guys are rock stars, thank you. Kelly Telfer, ladies and gentlemen. Artiste extraordinaire. Thank you, Kelly. It's always great to have him around. I'm gonna put links to Kelly's website, the Parkinson's Association is there and there. I'm gonna put Drive Towards the Cures link. So go into the description below, check out those links. I want you to go and I want you to learn more about all of this. I'm just getting back in the car because I can. And it's like, you know, oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. <sighs> I'm gonna sit here probably for the next 20 minutes, but thank you for coming in and watching today. Please look in and support Parkinson's and uh, thanks for watching.